please, a warm applause for Anirudh Dutta from Düsseldorf. <laughs> And his title is Stealing Weight from Steel. Auf die Plätze! Let me not start with stealing or steel, but let me start with global warming. You see, the concept of global warming was created by the Chinese to hamper US production. <laughs> Now, I did not come up with this statement. Although some people think that global warming is not true, but in reality, the temperature of the sea is rising, ice caps are melting, temperatures are changing all over the world, and the Statue of Liberty is also shedding its clothes. <laughs> global warming is a real issue, and I am working in material science, and I am fighting against it. <laughs> Now, most of... The research in material science is towards making metals more efficient at higher temperatures or coming up with new lightweight materials or tweaking old materials to make them as light as possible. You see, Apple comes up with an iPhone every year and it boasts about how beautifully they selected the aluminum alloys to make the phone as light as possible and you get brainwashed and you buy the product every damn year. You know, we are coming to a situation where the Apple products are actually getting lighter than the actual Apple. And that is a true story. Well, when you think about the big industrial machines or even the automotive industry, it gets much worse. You see, the automotive industry is desperate to reduce the weight of cars in order to follow the norms set by the EU regarding emissions. Now, we are not sheikhs in Dubai where we love our carbon fiber cars with gold-plated dashboards, right? We love our normal cars with the normal fuel efficiency that it gives. And steel or stahl is still one of the lightest metals and also one of the cheapest to produce. So how do we make steel lighter? How do we steal weight from steel? And here comes the concept of the Oreo. You see, as human beings, we all have our soft spots and our hard spots emotionally. So does this Oreo physically. So what you see here is a cream in between, which is soft, and a biscuit on top and at the bottom, which is kind of hard. So let me press this Oreo. As I press it, the cream starts deforming, yeah? After some time, the cream cannot deform anymore, and all the stress from my fingers is transferred to the biscuit on top and to the bottom, and it breaks. Ooh, that was a hard one. <laughs> Now, I wanted to do an experiment where I stack a pile of Oreos and press it with my legs in order to show you the mechanics of strain partitioning between the different phases, but it's going to get really messy. So I went to YouTube. And let's watch this beautiful video of where people stack Oreos and put it under a hydraulic press. Now, the outcome of this video is utter joblessness, but what we learn from it is when the hydraulic press hits the stack of Oreos, the cream starts deforming first, and then it cannot take up all the strain, and then the biscuit starts deforming. Now, when we talk about the structural properties of an Oreo, we talk about strength and ductility. Yeah? By strength, I mean strength, By ductility, I mean the extent to which you can pull a chewing gum until it breaks. Now, the Oreo has two constituents to it, the soft cream and the hard biscuit on top and at the bottom. And each of these constituents have their own structural properties. Let me explain. When you take the biscuit, it's strong. 
it takes a lot of effort to break the biscuit, but the ductility is low. When you take the soft cream, the strength is not that great, but the ductility is quite a lot. Now, what if you take a composite of the two, just like an Oreo? <laughs> you can actually play around with the strength and ductility to some extent. Now, how do we get the concept of the Oreo in designing steel? So first, let me explain what is steel. Steel is a metal alloy and blah, blah, blah. Let's cut the crap. Let's get to the point. Steel has a lot of iron in it and some amount of iron, of uh, carbon, manganese, and etc., that enhances the property of this iron. Now, designing a new kind of steel is just like cooking. Now, I should tell you that you should not trust my cooking skills, but you can definitely trust my metallurgy skills. So this, to design a new steel, obviously, we start with a bowl, and our main ingredients is the periodic table. So we add loads of iron to it, and we add a small amount of manganese, a small amount of aluminum, a small amount of carbon, and voila! We get a certain crystal structure that is the way the atoms sit around each other. Now, the interesting part of steel is, especially this kind of steel is, it has a split personality, depending on the temperature you are at. So let me explain the split personality. At a lower temperature, it sits in a certain way. At a higher temperature, it sits in another way. And each of these constituents have their own structural properties. You know, the split personality is just like, let's say... Hello? It's working now. Thanks. It's, it's just like Dexter. You know, he is a forensic journalist during the day and a psychopath killer at night instead of temperature, that's just time. Or let's take the movie Split, where Kelvin has 23 personalities. Now, Steel cannot compete with Kelvin. It's just restricted to six personalities. Or like The Mask, Jim Carrey during the day and smoking at night. And this gray area in between is where he's trying to wear this mask. Now, if we bring to the if we bring this to the concept of our Oreo, we have a biscuit and a cream, and this is where we get our composite material by heating the steel at a certain temperature. Now, we can vary the volume fraction of the amount of biscuit and cream. If we get, go to a low temperature, we have more biscuit. If we go to a higher temperature, we have more cream. We can play around with the strength and ductility of this material. And once we do this, we have our Oreo-inspired material at a micro, 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 micro level, where the green is a certain phase and the red is another phase, and if we deform it, the softer phase starts deforming, just like our cream, and its strain hardens and it cannot deform anymore, and all the other deformation is taken up by the hard phase that is sitting around it. So how do we apply this to the automotive industry? Let's take a car to your left that is just made of steel, and a car to your right that is made of advanced high-strength steels like the one I showed you. If we put it on a weighing scale, obviously it's lighter. Now how can we use this? Let's take a normal car that gives about 6 liters per kilometer. Let's take another car which is made of advanced high-strength steels, that has a much, much better mileage. What happens? You have a lot of savings. What can you do with that savings? You can buy another car. <laughs> now, I grew up watching Jetsons, which was very interesting, where they all spoke about flying cars. And I was promised that when I finished my bachelor's, I finished my master's, I could fly everywhere and not depend on Deutsche Bahn. But in reality, what did we get? We got cars with pimples on the side. <laughs> Would Oreo-inspired steel ever make it into the market? Literally, yes. Conceptually, not as yet. 
Well, I am proud of this movement where I am trying to bring Oreo-inspired steel into the market. So the next time you go to your automotive dealer and you buy this amazing car which is extremely fuel efficient, you can baffle him with one question, which is, is this steel designed like an Oreo? <laughs> well, if the answer is yes, you know who to thank. Thank you. Anirudh Stuta, your applause. Anirudh, um, how is your everyday? How does your everyday look like? So, you're putting steel in this uh, temperature machine or uh, oven, I guess. Uh, uh, so, my so how does your work look like? So my working day usually starts with eating an Oreo in the morning <laughs> and getting inspired by it and then going to work and trying to do exactly the same thing what I ate in the morning on my steel. And then it's a lot of microscopy where we work with like big microscopes and at a micro, 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 micro level. So these Oreo layers are just really tiny? Yes, they are like one micrometer. And another question I had, so you do this with steel to uh, lose weight, right? Yeah. Could you do the same thing with aluminum, for example? Well, aluminum has a different crystal structure, and since I work in steel, aluminum is kind of my enemy. I see. So sometimes they give really good properties, but hey, I, 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 I am true to what I work with. So uh, I, I have to tell you that I, I bought a cycle, and I decided not to buy a metal, uh, a, a carbon fiber one, since I'm a metal physicist. But obviously, aluminium is lighter than steel, so I had to buy an aluminium bike. But that's the only extent I can go to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Anirudh. Thank you. Tuta.